गुड मॉर्निंग किड्स दिस इज जॉयदीप रक्षित योर डिजाइन थिंकिंग कोच सो एज वी हैव लर्न नाउ इनोवेटिव थिंकिंग नाउ वी विल लर्न सोल्यूशन बेस्ड थिंकिंग लेट्स गेट इन टू इट सो फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट वी डिस्कस्ड इज इज आइडेंटिफाइंग द प्रॉब्लम सो वंस यू आइडेंटिफाई अ प्रॉब्लम देन ओनली यू कैन सॉल्व अ पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम so the first step of design thinking is identifying the problem which we have seen earlier now we have to find the solution of those problem so to have find a solution of a problem not only we need to identify a problem we need to solve a problem that is how we become problem solvers so this is all about solution based thinking let's get understand in deep solution based thinking provide realistic practical and innovative solutions to problems and gives a systematic approach to finding solutions so what we will do is we'll apply a systematic approach that is how your systematic thinking starts growing in where you apply the mindset of thinking systematically encourages solution focused thinking or solution based thinking so your objective is always to find out a solution for a particular problem so you just don't understand don't just only understand what is the problem understanding the problem is just 10% of 20% of what you want to achieve or you want to create the creation will only will happen when you understand the problem and you try to solve that particular problem in the most viable and feasible way which covers the needs of that person's problem design thinker is supposed to have a clear idea of the goal of the entire process so a person who is involved in the design thinking who is thinking with a design thinking objective will have a clear idea of the goal what they are trying to achieve <coughs> the design thinkers are not supposed to solve every specific problem but to start the process with the end goal in mind so when we start working on a process we have a end goal in mind so what is an end end goal in mind end goal in mind is nothing but when you are keeping the solution as the end goal of a particular problem when you keep solution as the end goal of a particular problem you start thinking with a solution based mindset <coughs> focusing both on the present and the future conditions explore alternative solution simultaneously so for example you can see this box what is this box this is a pizza box all of all of you kids like pizza right so this pizza box why this is square why this is not round in shape did you did you have this question earlier did you ask your parents that the pizza is round by but why the box is square in shape so when it was designed it was seen because the pizza is round so when a pizza is there inside a particular box so it will not touch these corners if it is a square box so that it doesn't get affected by the borders of that particular box so this is the reason why the pizza which is round which is kept in a square box so that it doesn't get affected and this is what is about design thinking this is about thinking about a design which is going to help your product so here the pizza is the product box is another product with where the pizza is kept the box could have been a round box but it is not a round box it is a box like this so we have to start thinking with a solution based objective so this is a solution which is being provided by the pizza box whoever has designed it scientific method versus design thinking method the scientific method begins with rigorous defining all the parameters of the problem so as to arrive at a solution what does design thinking understand identify both the known and ambiguous facets of the problem statement along with the current situation so if you see there is a small different 
scientific method begins with rigorously defining all the parameters of the problem. What are the parameters? The known parameters of the problem to arrive at a solution. Identify both the known and the ambiguous facets of the problem. So it also takes care of what is unknown. As we said already that there is a process through which you can uncover the unknown parameters as well by doing deep interview by peeling the whys, why after why after why you can have different whys. You ask question why, you get an answer then you again ask a question why, you get an answer then you again ask a question why, you get an answer then again you ask a question why and this is how it goes on with there is a tool called five whys. By doing that you are actually getting in, into the area where unknown also comes out that helps you develop your product better as we have seen in the example of Apple iPhone. This helps to unearth hidden parameters and open alternate paths to reach the solution. So this is where design thinking is having more impactful than the scientific approach because scientific approach always try to take what are the problems are known. Here we are trying to solve the problem which is not known as well, okay? Iterative approach. As design thinking is an iterative approach, intermediate solutions in the process of developing the largest solution to achieve the end goal can also act as a prospective starting point. So what does this mean? Iterative approach as, as from the word it means is in a design thinking process, the product might not be complete always because it goes into the market and it takes feedback. It takes the feedback from the people who need that particular product because we are solving a problem for a particular set of people. When we are solving a problem for a particular set of people, we go back to this people, we take the feedback from them. Again we come back and again we start the same cycle. So design thinking is an iterative process. It doesn't say that we, you take this product and go to the market and don't come back to the company again. It takes the market feedback, changes the product and again relaunches the product based on the customer feedback. So design thinking is not only a one time solution, it keeps on changing, it's an iterative process. <coughs> problem focused versus solution focused. Focus on the problem on the reason why a problem emerged, problem focused thinking. So what is this problem, why it has emerged, it's a problem focused thinking versus thinking about possible solution that help them to solve a problem is solution focused thinking or solution based thinking. Why do I have to perform this task? We need to ask a lot of questions. What is the reason that I have to study this subject? So you want to crack IIT. So you have to ask yourself question, which is the subject you need to study more? You have to, why you are studying this subject more? Which are the chapters you need to study? Which are the problems you need to solve? What are the questions which, is, which are being asked? These are the questions you need to ask if you are preparing a plan for cracking your IIT JE. So why are you waiting? Start applying these concepts in your own life. Why do we even spend time with this? So we have to understand which are the questions which are mostly asked. What are the topics which are more popular? What are the topics which are tough? Can we, can we cover the topics which are more tough? Where the application is more? Where the questions are more? Can we do that fast? So these are the strategies you have to prepare for your cracking your own IITJE. How can I solve this task? How can I address this problem? what would be the first step to solving this problem? So this is a solution based approach. So we are trying to find a solution. So we are asking how and what. What kind of preparation will be necessary for this particular task? So we, this approach, we first understand the problem based solution, problem based approach. Then from problem based approach, we move to solution based approach. First we understand the problem, then we try to solve that particular problem. Analysis versus synthesis. Break down something substantial into multiple fragments or components. So what analysis is talking about? 
break down something to substantial into multiple fragments or components. We have seen the example of assembly line of Ford, where everything is broken down into separate, 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 separate components. And then finally, they are added to make a car. <coughs> Combine fragmented elements to form an aggregated and coherent whole. So the same example of Ford, initially, for as per analysis, design thinking is about analysis and synthesis. So first is, you break it into different, different parts, and then you add it up and make the final product. As we have seen, the assembly line example, which is a very important example for all of us to understand very easily, and that concept is applied to make the product, which is the car, which was introduced by Ford in the year 1908. So this is about design thinking, analysis, and synthesis. Analysis and synthesis are complementary to each other and go hand in hand. Design thinkers have to synthesize based on the analysis they have done, and the analysis will then follow based on what has been synthesized to verify the results. So this is a very simple concept, but a very important and very impactful concept. This uh, assembly line example is applicable to even uh, companies like Pepsi, companies like Coca-Cola. If you go to a Coca-Cola ma manufacturing setup, you will quickly understand how the assembly line process is there. <coughs> the same concept, if you go to temples, you see you have a different, different counter for different, different things. And they follow the same assembly line concept you go to this counter, you'll get the prasad. You go to this counter, you'll get the token. Once you get the token, you follow this queue. You follow this queue, reach to near the idol. That is how the concepts which is being used universally in different, different ways. <coughs> so analysis and synthesis. There is a model called bridge model. So what is the bridge model? So we are in the problem space where we have to be in the solution space. So we identified these problems. We have to identify what are the solutions for this particular problem. So what is my model right now, which is analysis? We have to think, what is my model right now? And what could be the model which will give me this particular solution? And now we compile with synthesis and we make that as a solution. This is a very simple <coughs> and a very strong model for making your product from problem based to solution based. <coughs> Another important example, you follow the cycle 